Hello and welcome to yet another episode on Stretch Street Podcast. This is the Energetic EJ and I am glad to be here again today on another episode. So today on the show, I have a beautiful special guest all the way from Canada. My guest today is Urmi Hussein. And she holds a honor in finance and opt- um, and obtained the CFA charter in April 2023. Her profound passion for finance has influenced her love for personal development, particularly the desire to mentor young girls and women on finance in her leisure time. With a firm belief in self-education and continuous learning and growth, she is an active member of the Toastmasters organization's Uh, organization where she serves as the VP of education. She also works as the social media lead for the Women in Leadership Foundation, an NGO creating a platform to promote diverse, equitable, and inclusive workplaces. Urmi is known for her inquisitive nature and constant eagerness to learn while seeking answers in educational books and motivational podcasts. Three adjectives that distinguishes her are energy, disciplined, and determined. On top of all of that, she is a blogger, a YouTuber, a polygoth self-published author, a speaker, and mentor. And I love this about her. She leaves a sparkle everywhere she goes. And I'm like, okay, there's going to be a lot of sparkles from this episode. So I give some sparkle, she gives some, and everybody gets some sparkle from this episode today. And, you know, she speaks many languages, one of my favorites. So I'm going to work on her to the show today with this language. Ciao, Urmi. A fantastico avvertinello show oggi. Come stai? So, sto bene, tu? <laughs> oh my goodness, I had to practice that one. I mean, I've been learning Italian for over a year now, but I I can read, I can read it, I can understand it when I see it, but speaking it is still a problem because, I mean, I'm not in Italy or I'm not surrounded by Italians, um, so I don't speak it regularly. But now I'm beginning to meet Italians, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to speak more and um, learn the language more. But how are you today? Thank you for coming on the show. I'm good. I'm good. I knew. <laughs> I am well. Thank you very much. So tell me, I mean, your journey to um, being a polygoth, where did it start from? So how many languages do you currently speak? I speak 4.5 languages. <laughs> 4.5 languages. What are they? Why 4.5? Which is 5? <laughs> Which one is 0.5? The 0.5 is uh, Spanish. <laughs> oh, Spanish. So that means you're still learning it. I am. I am. Okay. I am still learning it. But the other four are Bengali, Italian, English, and French. Bengali, Italian, English, French, and then Spanish. Okay. Tell me a little bit about your growing up. I uh, grew up in Italy. I was born and raised in in Italy. I was born in the south of Italy. And then we used to move around a lot throughout the whole Italy. So I did a little bit in the south of Italy and the rest of my life in the north. And my parents are from Bangladesh. And this is why I always say like I'm, in, I'm Italian by birth and Bengali by blood. Because I think it makes it clear what I'm trying to say when I'm saying, like, I'm specifying exactly because um, there was a little bit of struggle when I moved to Canada and people would ask me where I was from and it was it was a struggle for me to come up with an answer. And so I, I pretty much lived my whole life in, in Italy and then I moved to, to Canada for various reasons where I basically did my university uh, and I've been living here for, for more than a decade. I work um, in Montreal so and it's a very multicultural city so I very much like that and I feel like um, in Montreal you can be part of different communities because it's so multicultural so so yeah so you know uh, it's interesting you talk about you know how you were born in Italy even though you're from Bangladesh and now you live in Canada right so the different you've, you've been in different places and that could really affect 
you know, sometimes like, okay, where do I belong? How were you able to navigate that? I don't want to call, I don't know if it came to you at some point as identity crisis. Did it? If not, but how were you able to handle like being from different places and trying to still be your authentic self where you found yourself? Yeah. Yeah, there was um, an issue of belonging at the beginning because I, um, I, I didn't really feel like I was fitting anywhere. That's how I felt my whole life I was, as I was growing up. Uh, because, um, you know, I was very much aware of the way I looked and, and also about my features. Like I knew that I didn't look Italian. So I was very much aware that whenever I was around my Italian friends, I didn't look like that. But then I also feel like I didn't fit the other side, which was the Bengali community, because even around them, like I look like them, but I did not think like them. So that was another issue. Like mentally, like my mentality was slightly different than theirs, um, especially because I was around so much of like Italian people. So my mentality was not um, like the South Asian mentality, it was very much like the Western mentality. So that's how like I felt like I wasn't fitting. And so... There was always an issue of belonging. Like I never felt like I was good enough. I never felt like I fit anywhere. I never felt like I belonged anywhere. And I think this became even bigger when I moved to Canada because I think people would make me feel that way even though they didn't want to intentionally, but they would make me feel that way when they asked me that question, like, where are you from? And it it would make me think a little bit because I was like, I'm really not sure what to answer. And I don't want to spend 20 minutes explaining my life history. And so that was, I think, what triggered a little bit this process in me of like, start thinking who I'm, who, who am I as a person and what I want to stand up for, what I want to represent. And so after a couple of years, I finally came to make this decision that, you know, I embrace both cultures. I, um, I am both of them, not just half of them. Um, And so that's why I always say I am Italian by birth and Bengali by blood, because I think it just encompasses who I am as a person. And I do have both sides in me, like those two sides, they do come out uh, when I am around people. So I, and I like to bring, bring that flavor, you know, I feel like it just makes me unique and special and authentic. I love it. I love it. You had to come to that place where you had to accept, like, see, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. It is a flavor, a mixed flavor. And that's what I bring to the table. Like, I can relate with the Italian culture as well as the, you just say Bengali, right? Mm -hmm. Because I I think I mistakenly said Bangladesh earlier on. I'm sorry. (laughs) But Bangladesh is the country. Yes, I know. So, So are the people of Bangladesh called Bengali? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you for educating me. I really suck at geography. Like, but thank God for this, you know, what I do as a podcaster. I'm able to learn from other cultures, meet other people, and find out, you know, even the time difference alone is a is almost like a subject on its own. Like, oh my God, right now it's 5 p.m. in Dubai and and it's 9 a.m. in, in Montreal and it's probably 6 a.m. somewhere else like oh what a wonderful world right okay fine Bengali are the people from Bangladesh right and I love that you know um that happened for you was there anything that helped you get to that point where you were able to then say okay this is what I want to represent and this is how I want to put myself forward um I think the fact that I had a lot of open conversations about this with friends um I think it really helped me a little bit to to find my path um, because I would speak about this, but I felt like it was not okay. Like, I felt like I was not normal, that I was feeling this way. But then when I would speak to people that were similar to me, I realized that we all shared the same issue. And so speaking about it, I think really helped me and also gave me a lot more confidence to really go through this. Right, right. Tell me a little bit about your financial journey and how your desire to help women, especially girls, to train them and mentor them in the finance world. What was the inspiration behind that? Um, So I studied finance and I work in finance. 
And one thing that I noticed as I was um, navigating the financial sector was that I never paid attention paid attention to this, but the financial sector is very male dominated. And I've seen it in my classroom. And then I see it in the in the industry. I see it like, you know, who who are who are the people in the board of directors, who are the people working in the management team. And that's what I saw there was a lack of representation, diversity, and etc. And the issue was also that even in the South Asian culture, there is this whole issue that women are not given enough education. We're often seen as a financial burden. And if you're a girl, usually you're given away to marriage because you're not seen of any any value. And women do not know too much about finances because they are taught that they always have to depend on their male counterparts, which is not correct, I think. I think we should be always taught to be independent regardless of any relationship status. And so... Because of that, I was like, you know what? I do want to mentor other women to basically learn about finances. But basically what I do, I mentor them in um, in the sense that I give them guidance on, like, if you want to study finance, I give them guidance on that. If you want to work in, in finance, I, I, I guide them. I basically guide them and I teach them, teach them also about other skills like communication skills, leadership skills, public speaking skills, things that are very useful no matter what. And so that's what I do. And I mentor usually like young women. So I'm talking about people in their 20s who are like between 20 to 25, uh, people who who have just started university or, or who have just started their career because I feel like I can bring that value and share my own expertise. And so that's what I've been uh, been doing, yeah. Right, right, right. And, and and how has that journey been for you? Has it been challenging? Has there been time that you asked yourself like, oh my God, who sent you? Like, why am I doing this? Should I quit? Has there been any time for you like that? No, not really. I actually do very much love it because it's, it's, it's volunteering, right? I, I'm not like no one is paying for, for doing uh, any of this, but I very much enjoy it because I feel like I'm meeting very great women and all the women that I meet, they're so ambitious. They're like, I want to get this. I want to do that. And I'm like, I love it. I love it because I'm also like that. And I feel like I can see a little bit of myself in them as well. So, and, um, Oh, wow. So it's, it feels, it feels fulfilling for you to be able to, you know, help them get that value, add that value to themselves as women. Fantastic. Okay. So, so you, you also, you know, you also blog, you do YouTube, you you were an author. Tell me about that mixture. Like, how do you find time to do all of this? <laughs> I create the financial world. <laughs> I create the time. That's how I say it. Um, yeah, the blog it's really started in twenty twenty, if I'm not mistaken, and um, it was just it was just random. This whole blogging thing was just random. It was not. It wasn't supposed to be anything serious. But then it did become it did become serious. So I have been blogging for four years, and the reason being is um, I wanted to write a book eventually, and I was like, I need to start from someone. I have to start like working on my writing skills. So it started with blogging, and then I shifted also to YouTube because um, I am part of the Toastmasters Club. And so I was like, you know what? I want to put in practice my public speaking skills, my interviewing skills and right. stuff like that. And so that's how I started with YouTubing. And before starting with YouTube, in, I was interviewed in someone's uh, YouTube channel. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I love doing this. Like, honestly, like that was the trigger. I was like, I love doing this. I should like start my own thing. So that's how I started with YouTube. And then with the book, even the book, it was not, plant like when i wrote it it was it was like yeah it's a long-term goal it will happen eventually but then one day i sat down i was like you know what i'm just gonna write it and so i wrote the book i think it's been two years and after that i was like you know what i want to write the second one so eventually i'm gonna write the second one and i used to think like when you write a book you have to go to through a publishing company but not necessarily because mm. now you can do self-publishing so i was like you know what i don't need anyone yeah. i can do it by myself and so that's how uh so that's how i ended up also being a self-published author i love it you seem to be a go-getter right 
and that's that's lovely so tell me which what what challenges have you encountered you know on your journey like something that almost stopped you or stopped you on your track but you were able to navigate to get back up can you share that with me um you know what i think there were many times that i had some uh, setbacks and there is not one that i can can pinpoint i mean i mean i mean there is one general one which is you know if things do not go the the way they're meant to be it's fine that's how i that's how i approach it i'm like you know what it's because i'm meant to be for bigger things that's what i tell myself that's what yeah that's what i tell myself and you know what that's how it has been so far um because I can just give you the example of like looking for a job. Um, there was a year, full year, where I just kept getting rejected. Honestly, I kept getting rejected every single time. And it did demotivate, demotivated me. Then I was like, you know what, I probably, I should probably just give up. I sh should probably just stick to what I am. Who cares? But then I took a different approach and I was like, you know what, let me just redo this. Like, I'm not someone who likes to give up easily. I, I'm not a quitter. Uh, I'm not someone who, you know, um, just give up things like that. I'm not. I'm actually like my quote, like one of the, my one of my favorite quote, quote is that I'm a half woman and half a warrior. And so that's how I like to see myself, that I'm a warrior. So no matter what challenges there are out there, I can fight them. And so, and so then afterwards, uh, I was like, you know what, let me just keep trying, trying, trying. And then eventually I ended up to my dream place. Like, th this is where I want it to be. And I was like, mm. this is where things are meant to be. Like, things happen for a reason and you will be where you're meant to be eventually. And it just went back to, like, the dream place that I wanted to be. It was something that I had like I had in mind when I was in university and it happened six years later. So even though it took long, it still long, happened. Yeah, so it still happened. yeah. So I like to be like I learned also to be patient when it mm. came to things. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. I hear you say patience is key when you want to achieve that goal, regardless of the challenges that comes your way. I hear you say persistence, like, okay, I've been doing it this way. It's not working. I'm getting rejected. I'm getting no's. Okay. How else can I do it? Not give up on the goal, but how else can I do it? I'm hearing persistent. Keep at it until you get what you want out of life. Are there any other life lessons that you can share with us as we wrap up this session? I very much like the word tenacious and the tenacious. Really, love yeah <laughs> and uh, resilience i think resilience is also very important absolutely. super important absolutely tenacious tenacity and yeah. resilience and you know on my journey of being a podcaster and, and, and having spoken to men women across you know the globe i've just come to see that word in a different light like i think resilience is at the center of who we are as humans generally like we have res we we are so resilient in 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 our in our wiring and if we can lean into that that's the point where nothing is impossible for us you know when we go through those challenges when life pushes you down like i've i've, I've interviewed people who some have been told like no you're gone this this is the end but they still find it somewhere as long as they don't stop fighting they still find it, you know, somewhere to keep fighting and getting or moving forward and making progress. And it's just beautiful to see in human that we all have that in common, regardless of your race, your color, your, your status, your level of education. And it is just beautiful. If you, if a young lady is looking at this right now, listening to this podcast and they just love how soft spoken you are like, Oh my God, she's so beautiful. She speaks so softly. Oh, how, you know, what, and they're like, oh my God, I wish I could be like her, you know, I could wish I could speak so soft spoken like this. What would you have to say to them? Just inspire a young lady watching you right now. I definitely would say, uh, never stop learning and, uh, always take time to invest in yourself in no matter what type of forms it comes, uh, whether it's through learning through people whether it's through mentoring, whether it's taking classes, whether it's reading books, uh, because I think 
I think if you always take that type of approach, it will always make you successful in life. Like people will notice it. And I can see how it's coming back to me. I can see it. I can see it because I do have people reaching out to me for things, but I had to really get out of my comfort zone to do all of these things. And so like it's only when you get out of that comfort zone that you will see all this type of growth. So I definitely always say like invest in yourself, never stop learning, get out of your comfort zone and boom. That's it. Love it. <laughs> That's love it. it. Love it. Thank you so much, Urmi. Grazie mille, amica. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for reaching out. Um, thank you for sharing your story and your soft spokenness. I, I really wish you all the very best on your journey as you continue to inspire young girls and just doing that, just volunteer, like on volunteering basis. That's it tells me of how big your heart is. And you know, I hope that it all comes back to you in multiple folds and in success in your own journey. Thank you so much for being here today. Awesome. All right, guys, this is where we draw the curtain on this episode. Um, this is the Energetic EJ, and this is the Stretch Street Podcast. Remember that we all go through challenges, but when we stay resilient, stay persistent, you know, keep learning and adjusting and not taking your eyes and your focus off the go, you know, those challenges become blocks that build us they become strengths they become muscles that make us better so instead of asking oh why me ask why this what am i supposed to learn here what is this challenging season teaching me and when you're able to distill those lessons you would be able to be of more value to yourself and to those around you okay so keep facing those challenges head on and keep winning this is the energetic ed until i come your way again next week remain amazing Bye bye